Okay, let's take advantage of a break in the high winds and the fact that the sun's actually out. I had to do a little video of uh, the telescope set up here at SUNY Fredonia. Um, so down at the base here, we've got uh, a pier uh, for holding everything. We talked about the logistics right now of uh, getting it stabilized. It's another discussion. But on top of the pier, um, we have this uh, red uh, Paramount ME2, that's the mount, that does uh, all the movement of the telescope, all computer controlled. On top of that, we have the plane wave 17-inch uh, uh, telescope, CDK telescope, and then uh, power supplies, lots of zip ties, cabling, everything's cabled right now. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, let's start with the mount. So, uh, this down here, are these down here are counterweights uh, for balancing the scope. They balance the side-to-side -side motion of the telescope. Right now, we're pretty well balanced. Uh, when we add cameras, we will probably need an additional counterweight. Uh, to adjust the weight, essentially, you can slide these up and down. So if you added another counterweight, all of this would probably get slid up a little bit um, and then balanced. Uh, there's another balance. Uh, with the optical tube going back and forth, that is done by sliding uh, the mount or the telescope here up and down in its dovetail plate. These little screws right here do nothing. They are part of the Paramount system, but we've got a plane wave, and so plane wave uses what's called the Versa plate. It's essentially these bolts right here, and right now we've got three tightened. Make sure they're tight. This is a little uh, latch that can hold the dovetail down. Uh, we'll put that in uh, place. Uh, if you need to slide it forward or backward, you're going to need a couple of people holding back here. You will loosen these and then either slide down or slide forward. Basically, that changes the weight distribution, so the scope is balanced you know, relatively well between front and back. Right now, we're a little front heavy, but Time we add cameras back here, it'll probably balance out. So I think we're good right now. Um, manually moving the telescope. So it's motorized, but for balancing, we do it through clutches. So back here is a clutch knob, and that's for the tilt here. Over to here, you can see a little symbol up here. That means it's locked into the gears, so the gears will move it. This right here, it's a little balance beam, means we're going to balance. So if we wanted to balance the telescope uh, in this direction, we would turn this like that. And whenever you turn, always have a hand on the telescope. Right now it's free. All right, so I can do this. But you don't ever want to release that and think you're balanced and find out you're not. Because uh, if it's grossly imbalanced, it will go crashing down. Right now we're good. So I can let this go, you know, hands free. It's, if I stop the movement, it stays. So even if we're over in here, I will stop the movement and it's staying. So that's balanced in that direction. Let's uh, talk about the front to back balance. Let me lock this in place. Don't operate the telescope with both clutches released. So if you're going to check the balance on another one, move it to the position you want, lock it, and then we'll release. So we've locked this, so it's not going to move. Uh, again, I want to check the front to back. So this is going to be a little bit front heavy and I want to come down. Always again, whenever you release, hold on. You don't want to release the clutch uh, without having a good hold on something. Uh, again, the star means we're into the gear. I guess that could be a gear. And there's the balance beam. So if we release, if you notice, the front is heavy. In other words, I got more weight up here than I do back behind the pivot plane. Once we add a camera, camera's gonna add eh, 10, 12 pounds. Uh, it should balance out pretty well. So let's lock that back into place. Now for using the telescope, uh, of course, these will need to be removed. These are basically uh, dust covers, mirror covers. Uh, we will put a spandex shroud over the whole thing. Uh, and we've talked about this, but if you want to 
use the shroud. The only way to get these off is to slide the shroud up and then you can remove everything and slide the shroud back down. In the future, I would recommend leaving this off, this off, this off, keep the shroud in place and then bag the whole setup. In other words, we put a big uh, dust cover. Uh, it could be a bag for moving. Uh, a lot of times I'll use the bags that go over mattresses, like a queen size, should easily fit. You can drape the whole unit, that way if we ever get any dust coming in uh, or moisture through uh, the dome, uh, the scope is protected. So to remove uh, dust covers, it's these little plastic bags. I'm just going to pull this off and I'll pull this one off. And let me set these back over here. There we go. And then this, you can just slide it up. You're going to pivot it. It's going to go down in. won't fall down in, of course. And then you'll slide it out the side. So hopefully you've got that good on the video. Slide in, down, pivot, and it drops in place. There's nothing that holds this in. So if we were to turn the tube so it's facing down, that would slide off. Uh, again, it's just meant to cover and protect from dust, but if you bag the whole thing, you're fine. Uh, set this down. Okay, so telescope-wise, you can see the big mirror down there. There's the secondary mirror. Uh, to start up, it's gonna be a couple of things. Let me first move this back into its position. I'll release the clutch back here. And then swing. So when you're done or starting up, this should be roughly the position of the telescope. Uh, balances the weight real nice. Everything's down. There's not a whole lot of stress on components of the telescope. So I would recommend keeping it in this position uh, when not in use. Uh, there's going to be two things that we need to do to power it up. All the electronics up here are powered into this switch, this uh, power strip that's on the telescope. Everything else, all the power supplies right now, are all strapped to the telescope. We have no dangling cables. Uh, nothing's going to catch. Paramount does have a through the mount cabling system. So basically the two cables, actually three, that we have are coming through the mount into here and they get routed and you can see them coming out the back here. We've got this network cable that's for our USB extender, there's the cable for power, and here's uh, the cable for the mount, for controlling the mount. We're routing that back through up to the telescope. Uh, the reason is we've got an Icon Ranger here, and the Icon Ranger is a USB extender. Uh, USB is limited on length with this. We can uh, essentially run maybe up to 300 some feet. Don't need it for this installation, but if you had to, you can run it pretty far. If in the future, you, we've got one extra USB port, but let's say we need more. Uh, in the past, I've uh, mounted onto here somewhere a uh, USB hub, plug the hub into there, and then you have four more uh, connections for USB. Uh, I've done up to six in the past. Uh, maybe seven. Anyway, you can add additional. Right now we're at three. Once we add the camera, uh, the Ranger will be fully used. So, back to powering everything up. I'm leaving everything on, like all of the components on here are on, so the only way, the only thing you need to do to turn all the power on is hit that switch. Uh, one thought for the future, we've done this in a number of installations, uh, right now, someone would have to come up to the observatory to power everything up. What you can do is replace this power strip with a IP addressable power switch. So then remotely from home, you can turn on the power uh, to this cable right here, which would then power up everything on the scope. 
And you can then remotely turn on the power to this cable here, which powers up the mouth. So one thing to consider down the road. Uh, components on the mount itself, uh, we've got our finder scope. This is the power supply uh, for the camera. Right now I just have it here, but that will get wired into the back of the camera when it's in use. If you're not using it uh, and you're doing visual, um, dangle it here. Everything's out of the way. This is a focuser, so I can run the focus now that we have power. I can do it out or in. You don't have a rotatable focuser, so the counterclockwise and clockwise don't make a difference, but we can, there's out, it's all the way out. Ah, sorry, that was all the way in. <laughs> was out. Anyway, that's how you would focus. Uh, either, uh, well, that's how you'd focus if you're using an eyepiece. If we're doing remote imaging, uh, you've got computer control of this focuser. Moves in and out the same way as if you use this hand controller. Over here, uh, a bunch more power supplies. This up on top is the dew heater. So it is on, we'll just always leave it on, uh, but it's not heating unless it needs to. There are temperature sensors on the primary mirror, on the secondary mirror to measure ambient air temperature, takes all that into consideration, figures out where the dew point is, also checks humidity, figures out where the dew point is, and if need be, at certain times of the year where you might have frost or you just might have uh, dewing, uh, the heater will automatically kick on. This is controlled through software. You can do it manually. There's little switches over here that we could just turn on. Like if I wanted them on for some reason, that would override the software. But right now it's set up for software control. This box here, uh, uh, electronic focuser accessory, does a couple of things. Uh, not only does it handle focusing, so my hand controller is plugged in here and the computer software will operate through here, but here is also our computer connection. So we're routing it in through this USB and then over to uh, the computer. So everything's plugged into uh, this. Uh, here's coming in other electronics and sensing uh, over here from the very uh, back of the telescope itself. All right, so telescope uh, about the mount. Uh, the Paramount ME uh, designed to hold up to 240 pounds. Uh, you're nowhere near that right now, uh, maybe 100 or so. So you can add more. We talked about, uh, oh, one thing we forgot to mention was this plate up here. That's an additional dovetail plate in case you want to add a scope. So if you want to put a refractor up here, and then you can put a secondary camera or just have a refractor for visual use or swap the camera, whatever you want to do, but it's an additional mounting point. Uh, whenever you do that, of course, you're going to need to rebalance the telescope. So just remember that. Um, back to the mount. Down here at the base, this is the computer control cable that's routed up to the Ranger up here, which then goes over to our computer. Uh, this is a joystick, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, that lets you manually control the telescope. Here's the power coming in, and between these two is the power switch. So when I flip it on, uh, Paramount, your software BISC, uh, is very uh, musical. Uh, so you'll hear little tones. You'll see a couple of lights flash right here, RA and DEC. If they're flashing, that means it's uh, sensing to make sure everything's okay. When it goes to solid, that means it's done sensing and everything is okay. If it fails to go to solid, uh, uh, you'll have to look in the manual and maybe tweak some stuff or just turn it back off and on. Also, when it goes to solid, it'll make a couple of tones. You'll hear beep, 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 beep. Um, so let's do this and watch it go through its process. So I'm going to flip it up, that power's on. So we hear bing, bing. So both solid, two tones, we're good to go. Uh, this will move the telescope, but it's not going to move the telescope until it's homed. So here's a button here for moving. Uh, notice it's inoperable. 
the telescope has to be home first before it sets itself up so uh, for movement so most of the time you'll be doing this uh, through the computer but if you want to do it through here in the in the observatory the center joystick you plunge it down twice what's going to happen is the scope's going to rotate this way and then the tube's going to rotate uh, pointing what they call the two o'clock hour so let's watch it. When it finishes, it's going to get close and then it will fine tune itself to the internal sensors. Uh, it'll creep, what it calls, if you're looking at the computer screen, it'll say creeping to uh, a position, either on RA or deck. But when it gets to that position, you'll hear tones. So let's listen for the tones. Here we go. Bing, 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 bing. bing. And now it's ready to go. Now that it's ready to go, I can use the joystick and move it. Four is the fastest, three is slower. When you get to two and one, uh, you can sit here and play with this all you want. You're probably not going to see it move. Uh, if you're looking through the eyepiece, it will. Uh, one of the benefits of this would be let's say you're looking at the moon and you want to move around the moon to look at craters or whatever features. Uh, Keep your interest. Uh, flip it to two, most likely one. So I'm going to leave it on four so that you can see it move. We'll move this way. There we go. So yeah, and like I said, if I turn it to three. It is moving, but you can barely tell it. And like I said, if you get to tune one, you're not going to see it. Um, there is a light here. So at night, if you need additional lighting, you know, red light, there. And you've got a dim uh, red light. That's brighter. And not only is it brighter, but it turns a light on under here. The way to turn that off is I flip it back to center, so this light goes off. And then when I flip it back on again, That'll come off, and then you just flip back off. So it's like a double flip. So if I flip it up, that light goes on. That does. Back to center. Up. That light goes back on, but that goes off. And now we're all the way off. All the way around. That is it right now for um, the telescope. We might talk a little bit later on about how to swap in and out a camera.